Hey guys, in this video, we will start looking at relational database design as it relates to relationships, foreign keys, and overall normalization. Now on the screen, you will see a database that I developed sometime in the past, and you would see that we have an entity relationship diagram, as well as a bunch of lines that depict relationships. Now the database being depicted here is really an, a clone database for an Instagram application. And you will see that I have here the main table being users because without users, there would be pretty much no Instagram. And then from the users table, you'd notice that there are a bunch of lines highlighted when I hover over that entity, all right? So each of those lines depict relationships and what you would call dependencies that users or other tables have on the data found in the users table. Now, before I start dissecting the database's design, I would like for us to discuss shortly what normalization is. Now, simply put, normalization is a process by which you eliminate redundancies and repetitions in your database. Now, of course, you'd probably ask, okay, what would be a redundancy or a repetition? And let's just take this database here that we have on screen and look at an example of photos. Now, if anybody watching this video has ever used Instagram, then you would know that a photo has to be posted by a user, all right? And then a user can have many photos. Now we see here that you have a database for the users and the user would have signed up. They're putting their username and their password and their email address and so on. And this is a rather scaled down version of that, but we can work with it for now. So a user would have put in their username and we would have taken a timestamp of when this user created their account. And then having registered, this user can go ahead and start posting one or many pictures and the pictures or photos would be stored in this database where we store a URL because instead of storing the actual image, we're just storing a path to the image that we'll just you know pull back when we're displaying it on the application. And you would notice that this row here or this um, entry here in this entity, user underscore ID has a kind of red thing beside it. And that's what is usually used to depict a uh, dependency or a foreign key. Now, the scenario would be that every time somebody posts a picture that you would say, okay, new picture with a new ID, you'd post the image URL. And then let's say my username would be T Williams. Then you would say T Williams. And then I posted another one, then you have T Williams. And then you have a bunch of T Williamses. And then if there's something wrong with the code, maybe it would be T Williams up top and then T Williams one below. And then something could go wrong and the, the whole text T Williams would become uh, kind of tedious to maintain, all right? And so we, we want a clean way to associate a photo being associated with a user. And then that is where normalization comes in because when you realize that in associating records in one table with a record in another table kind of gets messy because maybe you're repeating unnecessary data or maybe after three, four times the, the data seems unnecessary to repeat, then you would normalize this database by taking out this seemingly repeating data or, or potentially repeating data, putting it in its own table with its own primary key in its own table, and then you just reference that primary key where necessary. So in context, when we have a user posting a picture, instead of repeating the, the user's username every time because something could go wrong and it's string, we'll just reference their ID. So when I, maybe I was the first person to ever sign up for Instagram, my ID would be user ID one. When I post my first picture, it would be user photo ID one with user ID one. All right. And then I'm, I maybe post a picture, you know, down the line and it's the 200th picture on Instagram. Then the photo ID would be photo ID one. And then the user ID is still one. So if I look in photos for all of the pictures posted by me, I can just say, give me back all photos where user ID, I went through select statements with our conditions and so on. So I could just say, give me back select or select star from photos 
where user underscore ID is equal to one. And that will match back all of the users from this table with user ID one and just match them here and bring back all of the pictures for user ID one. All right, so that's a nice, clean and easy way for us to just maintain this referential integrity. And I spoke about data integrity before in this course, that, that, that is basically just maintaining that your data is clean and your data makes it easy for you to associate and navigate across different tables. So in, in doing normalization, essentially what you're doing is establishing foreign keys between tables because when you abstract the user information from your photos table or maybe the photos information from the user's table because maybe your design initially had you trying to associate the photo with the, the, the user in the same table, then you realize that you have to be repeating the username in the user's table when your user's table should really only have one instance of a user. So then what you would do is extract all the repeating photo information and put it in its own table. So in, in the process of normalization, you know, it's kind of a break fix cycle. You get it right. Uh, you may get it wrong initially, and then you correct it later on. Um, but then for the remainder of this section, I'll just be showing you how you can go about doing it right the first time to reduce that break fix cycle and that repetition um, process. process. If you, if you read up on normalization online, you'll see a number of scholarly documents talking about the first normal form and the second normal form. And that's really useful for when you get a, an initially badly designed database. But then as the designer, I put the onus on you, the responsibility on you to just do it right the first time. So if we take a a closer look at the other tables here, we'll see that we have lines that depict which table is related to which. And in the context of my SQL's ERD representation, you notice that you have kind of dotted lines versus solid lines. So the solid line means that the ID or the foreign key is not, is not optional in the related table, whereas the dotted line means it may not be necessary. So as the designer, you can set that up. So I can tell you right now that this was poorly designed because I'm here saying a photo can exist without a user. And that's wrong because the foreign key from the user table to the photos table is user ID. And then if you hover over the line, it will show you what the primary key is on one side and the foreign key is on the other side. And then the dotted line means that the foreign key might be empty which is wrong because Instagram really should not have an image unless it has a user to associate with this image. So that's wrong. However, on the other side, between users and likes, if you hover over that solid line, then you'll see that the user ID on the likes side is the foreign key, which is associated with the ID in the user's table. And it's solid because you can't have somebody liking something without a user. Uh, well, you can't have a like without a user. And in the same way, a like only applies to a photo. So we have likes being associated with photos. And then this is what you call a linker table because it is storing two foreign keys. It has no primary key for itself, but it is saying that this user depicted by user ID here liked this photo. So it is it is storing the foreign key for the user table and the foreign key for the photo table. So in a nutshell, that's what a foreign key does. The foreign key is pretty much just storing the value of a primary key from another table. And then that brings up another thing uh, when it relates to integrity, because you can't or shouldn't under any circumstance have a foreign key in a table that does not match back to a primary key in another table. All right. So you can have user, you can't have 10 users in the user table numbered one through 10 and then have user number 11 liking photo number 250 when there are only 200 photos and 10 users. All right. So that's another aspect of the foreign keys where the values of the foreign keys must match back to the values in whatever primary key column is being referenced in the other table. And finally, once you establish that foreign key uh, presence in another table, then you would have created what is called a relationship. So just by creating this 
foreign key for user ID here and user ID here. And if I hover over users, you see all of those highlighted lines. Those are all the tables that depend on the primary key values stored in the user's table. Just by setting up that foreign key user underscore ID in any other table, then you would have established what we call a relationship. So for the remainder of this section, we will be going through modifying an existing table and adding foreign keys because for our school DB, we would have had multiple tables. And I'm sure just by looking at it, you would be wondering, how do we associate the teachers with the students? And also we will be looking at doing that using the regular editor view versus the model design and creation view. So stick around, exciting times are ahead.